Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Come and get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying encounters. I post new videos every day, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified when new daily content arrives on my channel. All right, let's get right into it. In Logan County, about four to five miles east of Sabacchio in Arkansas, this area borders the Ozark National Forest. My brother and myself were driving home from Paris on Highway 22. I was driving and my brother had fallen asleep. I was driving east just about a quarter of a mile east of Skating Rink Road. I was watching the roadway when a large reddish-brown animal ran in front of my car. I barely missed the creature. I clearly saw that it was on two legs and had long fur as we went by. I slammed on my brakes and screamed out when I first saw it. My brother startled awake and I asked him if he had seen that. He did not. I looked in my rearview mirror but did not see the creature anymore. I have had several animals run in front of my car from horses, cows, deer, and once a pig. I played over what I had seen over and over and realized that it wasn't any animal I had ever seen before. I know it was huge, bigger than a man. It was close to midnight and it was clear and hot. The area was heavily wooded with spring-fed creeks and plenty of wildlife and edible plants, wild fruits, and tree nuts. The witness, who is now a law enforcement officer, stated that the creature was bipedal with massive features. The arms and legs were very large, the hair color was a burnt orange, and long and shaggy. The creature cleared the entire road in four steps, and then was out of sight. The witness stopped and backed up, but did not see anything else. The witness is a hunter and is familiar with all of the local wildlife of the area. He states it was not a bear as this was bipedal and stood between seven and a half and eight feet tall. The sighting lasted approximately three seconds. A few months later, I had an incident hunting. I thought someone was following me in the woods. I was walking, and when I stopped, I could hear someone taking a step or two. They were close enough to hear, but just in the woods enough not to see them. I walked and would stop several times, over a half a mile. At one point, I heard a branch snap. I finally felt in danger. I only had birdshot in my gun and yelled into the woods. I yelled toward the noise and warned I had a gun. I ran to a meadow that I knew connected to a roadway. I ran out into the meadow and stopped about 25 yards into it. I could hear the person following stop in the woods. A tree started shaking and branches were snapping. It scared the hell out of me. I warned again and fired a shot in the air. Who or whatever it was did not run away, but I could hear it walk up the ridgeline. I walked out of the meadow and all the way home on the road. I rarely go to the woods now, and if I am on foot or on ATV, I carry a gun. When my cousin was nine or ten, he was feeding his pigs. He said a large, hairy man came out of the woods and startled him. The family thought it may have been a transient or some sort of hill people from the mountains, but... They never had anything come up missing, and he just walked back into the woods. On to the next one. I was 12 years old at the time. I was at my grandmother's house outside Bradford, Arkansas. My grandparents owned a large farm where the White County Line and the Jackson County Lines met. It was around 9 to 9.30 a.m., I had slept in the guest room that night. When I woke up, I had the feeling as if someone was watching me. There was a window next to the bed. As I looked to see if someone was there, I noticed a Bigfoot staring at me through the top pane. I am six foot five tall and can only see through the bottom of the window. That may give you an idea of its height. It was a reddish brown color. I just looked and stared for probably 30 to 45 seconds. I never felt threatened or scared at any time. 
After this time had passed, I wanted to see more. So I tried to step out of the bed really softly, and when I did, the rug that was on the hardwood floor slipped, and I lost my footing. As I was down on my knee, the Bigfoot stared at me. I was very puzzled. I was at a point where I just had to see what was going on. I then turned and tried to run to the back of the house where I could see it. When I got to the back door, I saw it running through a field and toward an old barn. It had a very distinctive running style. Its hands were straight down and flat. I tried to get my grandmother and mom's attention, but they didn't get there in time. The Bigfoot had a very slim, muscular build. It was early summer morning, very bright and sunny and hot outside. There were woods on the back of the property, as well as a few open pastures and hills to the west. On to the next one. In Sebastian County, heading east toward Boonville Lake near Milltown. It was around fall. I and my friends were 16 years of age. My friend had a relative visiting from the big city life of Florida, so me having a crush on her... Me and my friend took her for a ride out in the country, back roads, so I could mingle and get to know her. It was kind of the Dukes of Hazard atmosphere, on a dirt road for miles going to a lake. There was a hill on the left side with a lot of trees and pasture on the right side with a barbed wire fence. I was driving a little old Ford Ranger pickup truck with a stick shift in the middle. She was in the middle and my friend was on the passenger side. Me, being a teenage boy, thinking it would be cool to scare her, thinking that will make her like me. I turned the headlights off, and when I looked up, I saw it walking across the road a distance ahead of us toward the pasture. The girl went ballistic, screaming and climbing all around, making it hard for me to get to the lights. That was the only time I saw it, because I was struggling for the lights looking down. I did see it for about five seconds, and I was traveling at about 40 miles per hour. I was totally stunned by what I saw, and my friend was trying to get her to calm down. She just kept on screaming. When she did stop, she kept on crying, asking us over and over if we had seen it. When she told us what she'd seen, it was the exact same thing I saw. My friend told her she was crazy until I told him I saw it too. After that, we skipped the lake and didn't go back for about a year and a half. It's still like a film in my mind today. The description, six feet tall, pretty hairy, but not outrageous like the movies. The arms are a little bit longer than normal, but not much. It walked with a bounce, but maybe because that was with a vehicle coming up on him. The headlights didn't blind him like a deer. He looked at the truck with kind of quick glimpses when he was walking across the road. It really does make your skin crawl and give you chills when you start to remember it. It was nighttime, clear with a bright moon and nice weather. There were trees on the left in the hill where the barbed wire fence was with open pasture with some trees scattered in it. On to the next one. My name is Liz, and I saw Bigfoot while apple picking in Grafton, Vermont. Mentally, I've never been quite the same since that day. It was September of 1998, and I had been asked by my stepmother to fill a few buckets of apples from an orchard that was near our home. Technically, it was illegal for us to take those apples, but we had lived by the orchard my whole life and had never been confronted for grabbing a bucket of fruit from time to time. The place was so large that I doubt anyone would have been offended if they knew locals were taking a few of them for personal enjoyment. I was 15 at the time, and I had just arrived home from school when she intercepted me and asked me to take care of the chore. She was in the middle of preparing for some community bake sale that was scheduled for the next day. I recall that I wanted to take care of the task quickly because I wanted to go hang out with a boy that I had a crush on at the time. It was as I was walking through the woods and was about to arrive at the edge of the orchard that I spotted what at first I thought was an older man with a large beard. It caught me off guard because it was so rare for us to see any of the workers. 
it seemed that they almost always completed their duties during the early morning hours, well before we would ever think to venture over there. The first thing I noticed was how he appeared to be wearing a brown jumpsuit that matched the color of his beard perfectly. But it was soon after that that I noticed the length of his arms as well as the size of his hands. It was no man. It was an animal, and a very rare one at that. It was in a crouching position, and I watched as it tossed an apple core to the side before extending one of its long arms towards the low-hanging branch and picked a fresh fruit. It was while it was munching on the apple that it locked gazes with me. There was something so peaceful and laid back about the animal, and it left me so very unprepared for what happened next. It all happened so fast. The strange-looking animal's demeanor instantly changed. It was as if it had put on an entirely different face as it stood up and ran toward me with its arms flailing high in the sky. I was so shocked by what I was seeing that it took me a few moments to realize that I needed to run as fast as possible in the opposite direction. It was the first time that I had looked over my shoulder that I realized that the Sasquatch had closed in on me. The thing was so tall, especially with its arms up in the air. I emphasize enough how long its wingspan must have been. I remember thinking how I was going to die and how I'd never see my crush again or get another chance to tell my family how much they meant to me. It was as I returned my gaze forward that I noticed the Sasquatch was now in the treetops above me. Somehow, it had managed to leap all the way up there with ease. It quickly climbed from one branch to the next, reminding me much more of an arachnid than a primate. Each time I looked up at it, it stared down at me with such intensity. I thought it was only a matter of time before it decided to drop down onto my head and take me out. I don't know if it's because I was too preoccupied with surviving even to notice, but I don't remember it making any noises while it chased me. The noise was that of it moving throughout the terrain and treetops. I don't know what happened, but I suddenly made it through the side door of my garage and then into my house. It was such a relief to smell the pastries that were currently baking in the kitchen. When my stepmother came out of the hallway to see what all the commotion was about, she saw I was staring out the window, and she even told me that I looked like I had seen a ghost. I didn't hesitate one bit to tell her that I had seen a Sasquatch. There was actually a boy at my school who often talked about how he had seen one with his brother, but no one ever believed him. Instead, everyone made fun of him and called him Bigfoot Boy. That was how I knew what I had seen was a Sasquatch. I don't know for sure whether my stepmother believed that I saw a Sasquatch, but she could tell that I saw something bizarre. I was always a good kid and wasn't one to pull pranks or anything like that, so she at least knew I wasn't making it up. After she sat me down in the kitchen and poured me some tea, I suddenly began to cry. I can't even tell you why I was crying, but something about that sighting had truly disturbed me. It was like I didn't want to believe what I had seen, and there was something overwhelmingly stressful about that. I'll never know why the Sasquatch let me escape. You could tell that it was such a skilled predator that if it truly wanted me, it would have had me. My theory is it just wanted to intimidate me enough to where I wouldn't come anywhere near it if I were ever to see it again. In any case, I'm so very glad that I survived that terrifying encounter. I never saw the Sasquatch again, but I often had the feeling that it was near. On to the next one. I think it was around 1980 or 1981 that my grandfather came for a visit. I was 21 or 22 at the time. Now, Grandpa was quite the character, and he was always goofing around and trying to make light of dark things. However, he was also quite sincere if you took the time to sit down with him for a conversation. Sometime during the evening, the conversation turned toward the Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin Bigfoot film. 
I don't recall what exactly started us down that path, but we began to talk about the film clip. At that time in my life, I thought that I had heard every story Grandpa had to tell at least ten times over, but this night was going to bring me a new one. He broke into the conversation with a somewhat serious tone and said, You know, Grandma and I saw some of these critters back in Colorado in the 30s. We were all stunned about what we had just heard. I spoke up and asked him to tell us all about it. Knowing that no story from Grandpa was ever going to be a short one, we were about to hear about the whole affair from start to finish. Now, when Grandpa told you a story, you had better not laugh at him or disrespect him in any way. He was all business and all truth when it came to his stories. He was a man's man. Grandpa wasn't rich, but he wasn't poor either. He and my grandma moved to Colorado Springs because he was the sole regional representative for a large mining supply company. There was plenty of mining going on in that entire region at that time. So it was both necessity and convenience that brought them to the area. He started to tell us that he and grandma used to stay for the night at a place called the Cayenne Lodge every couple of months. I guess it was a little retreat for them. He said that the round trip to the lodge from Colorado Springs was about 24 miles. I found it incredible that he could remember such a thing, but he always had a memory like a vice. He said that the Cayenne Lodge was located at the top of Cayenne Mountain, and at the summit you were at 9,200 feet above sea level. The toll at the base of the mountain was a dollar, and the trip to the summit was one of the most breathtaking rides and views that one could ever see. For most people, a buck was a lot of money to pay for the toll, and many people did not even have a car suitable to safely make the climb or the descent. Things weren't as they are today. He told us that some people lost their brakes and their lives on the mountain, but he bragged that his straight eight Ford was up to the climb every time. He told us that the ascent was accomplished by a zigzag course with an average grade of 7.5% and no more than 10%, and the road was a minimum of 20 feet wide and was covered with crushed granite for traction. He also mentioned that cars could pass each other anywhere on the road. He remembered with vivid detail many of the points along the road as you climbed. Hell's Gate, Spiral Shelves, Paradise Trail, Cloudland Loop, Swing Sublime, Vista Grand Swing, Multi Vista Swing, and Devil Horns, each offering some spectacular view or formation that was unforgettable. His recollection was that they had taken this trip some 15 or 20 times while living there. They also had one of the best zoos in America alongside of the road at Swing 2, as he calls it. When you reached the top, Cayenne Lodge was there at the summit. He said it was like a small white castle with a rock wall and stairs leading you inside. I believe he said it was Southwest Indian architecture. He and Grandma thought it was the most unique and beautiful structure that they had ever seen, and they loved this place. Inside, there was a large and spacious lounge area where you could see many valuable Indian artifacts. There was also an enclosed glass observation deck, both lunch and dining rooms, and a few guest rooms for those who wanted to stay the night. They had a custom of stopping to take in the view by Vista Grand Swing on every trip, this was their favorite observation point, and he said that you could see for a hundred miles from there. The rolling hills, trees, and mountains being always in view. On this particular day, they stood looking at the hillside with many pines growing on it. In between the pines, there were a few open areas where the hillside could be seen, and the ground was sandy colored, which contrasted the dark green pine trees that surrounded it. You could see other mountains and snow-covered peaks off in the distance as well, which is why they like to stop there. On many occasions, he and my grandmother had seen wildlife walking on the slope, especially on this particular slope. As fate would have it, while he and my grandmother stood gazing out at the landscape, 
on one of their trips, they saw what seemed like two large gorillas emerge from the trees on the hillside, walking on two legs. Grandpa said the hill was not so far away that they couldn't tell what they were looking at. He estimated the distance that they saw the creature walk was about 800 yards or so before they walked into another group of trees and vanished from view. There were very few people hanging around outside at the time because it was too warm. Certainly, nobody would be walking in the mountains while covered in black from head to toe. He also said that the creatures were very tall and, based on the way they were walking, had unusually long arms. My father asked why he had never heard this story before. Grandpa said that the one time he had started talking about it many years ago, he almost got into a scuffle with the man he was talking to since the guy told him he was full of you-know-what. After that, Grandma told him it would be better to keep it to himself, so he did. I hope you enjoyed those encounters, and if you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I post new content every single day, so be sure to hit that notification bell, and you'll be notified exactly when that new content arrives on my channel. Again, thank you so much, and until next time, bye!